Well, good afternoon, gang, and welcome to Film Sunday. Today's episode is all about Kodak Ektachrome, which is a lovely color positive film stock from Kodak. I'm going to be showing you 10 images I made on this film stock all around London and specifically at some botanical gardens that I visited with my wife and my tiny human. I'm also going to be talking about just how expensive film is getting recently. I actually asked you good people of the internet what you thought about this and I have some results to share and they might surprise you. But for now, enjoy the majestic tones of Kodak Ektachrome 100. Before we begin, I found a monster truck. It was just on the side of the road. So I had to take two photographs of this and of both of these, my favorite one is the second one, which is rather odd if you think about it. It's suburbia with a monster truck. I love the lady behind the truck pushing the pram. Classic. I only find that in London, I think. The first place that I wanted to use this majestical film stock was at a botanical gardens called Seville Gardens, which is in Windsor. And so first, we venture to Windsor. I came in too hot into the Seville Gardens with this one. I don't know what I was thinking. I guess I thought that the colors would look nice but the composition on this just flattened the whole image out and it rendered to be pretty useless. Luckily, I went on to make some bangers after that, so I'm grateful for what I learned from this piece of garbage. My main idea visiting these botanical gardens was that all of them had greenhouses in them and I am a sucker for greenhouses. Here are some photographs that I've taken of greenhouses in the past. I think they render incredibly well as images and I love the way that the light just bounces around inside of them, makes for some excellent portraits as well as just great photographs in general. So if there's a greenhouse near you, take some celluloid to it man, make some bangers. And just like that, we were done with the Seville Gardens. Our next port of call on this magical ectochrome journey was the Keys. Q for the Q Gardens near Chiswick. I must say, I was blown away by the whole of the Kew Gardens, especially their greenhouses. I was so overwhelmed with what to shoot and how to shoot it that I was trying to be 
frugal with the shots because I only had one roll of ectochrome to burn through but I also wanted to shoot everything so it didn't yield the best compositions I won't lie. I am however getting very used to shooting ectochrome. I found that the sweet spot is right there on 100. You shouldn't really overexpose or underexpose this film because it's incredibly unforgiving and it just handles the greens and the blues so well. In my whole life, this is my third roll of ectochrome. And I must say, I'm growing increasingly fond of it. It's not my favorite film stock for color. Um, I loaded up Lomo 400 on my last shot of ectochrome of these lily pads, so I'll put up a side-by-side -side comparison. I might just prefer the color and the contrast in the Lomo compared to the ectochrome, but, but that certainly doesn't discount ectochrome from being a pretty amazing stock. Nothing really beats the feeling of getting your color positive film back from the lab and looking at it on a light table. It's truly unforgettable and it's part of the whole process of shooting color positive film. All that being said, Ektachrome is one of Kodak's most expensive stocks. And just the other day, I asked all y'all, good people on the internet, if you found that film was getting too expensive and an overwhelming majority of you said 100% yes. I'm very conflicted about the price of film, to tell you the truth. It's so sad that film is getting so popular amongst all of the people around the world now, but it's also more expensive than it ever has been in the past. It definitely has something to do with the global debacle that we've had for the last two years, but the demand for film is certainly far outweighing the supply right now, which is obviously driving prices up. At the end of the day, photography is photography. Digital and film are basically achieving the same results. The process is different and one is certainly a lot more fun than the other one, but it's quite sad. I've limited the amount of film that I'm shooting and I'm picking up my digital camera a lot more and I just feel like the whole process of taking photographs on digital is just not the same. As I'm sure you can tell, I certainly have mixed feelings about this whole situation. Like that one time my tiny human pooped on me. But that's where I'm going to leave the video for now. Hope you enjoyed the 10 images I made on Kodak Ektachrome. I'll see y'all in the next video. Much